It's Halloween, everyone, which is my favorite annual holiday, except we're in Austria and people don't really treat it with that much value. They celebrate it, but it's not that big a deal. But in Ireland, where I'm from, people would treat it religiously and people would make videos of themselves dressing up and it was crazy. Here are some guys in Dublin having a game of chasing. I mean, look at these guys. They're just, they're just giving each other hugs. Isn't that lovely? And here's some kids trying to give each other pieces of wood just out of love. Ah, I miss Ireland. But we're in Austria, where everyone is ridiculously nice until the door is closed. And I always felt a bit homesick around this time of year, so I never quite knew whether to dress up or to just ignore the whole damn thing. This year I decided to go all in, and I've had this design for years, like literally since 2018, and I've never gotten around to printing it, but this time I'm gonna do it. So one of my favorite games when growing up was Half-Life. I was 10 when it came out. And it came out with this program called Worldcraft, which is a level editor. And I would spend hours doing this and making my own mods, making my own levels. And eventually I ran out of assets that were in the actual program to use. So I had to create new ones. And that is actually how I got into 3D design. So you might say from playing this game, I got into 3D printing. So it's, it's dear to my heart. So what, what could I design? A grunt? Yeah, it's a bit dull, I think. The female assassin? I don't think I have the body for that. The disturbingly named and designed Gonark? I have no idea how I could actually do that. No, it shall be the humble head crab. So here's the design. I actually used a program called Sculptures to make this, which is sort of the ancestor of ZBrush. It is still available as a legacy program and it is free to download. It is very basic, but because of that, it is really easy to use. I would probably recommend ZBrush over it because it's a million times more powerful, but Sculptors is still a handy tool to have, especially for a beginner getting into sculpting. So if you're interested in trying 3D sculpting, then you can give it a go to test things out. And if it works out for you, get something a little more advanced like ZBrush. The great thing about sculpting tools is not just the shapes that you can create, but the textures that you can apply. And this can be customized using an image of the texture that you want. So you can search for this on Google, find the right texture and simply paint it on the model. You can also use a symmetry tool to create a shape on one half of the model, which is automatically applied to the other side. When you're finished the basic shape, you can turn off symmetry and make your model more realistic with fine details. So the idea is I can create this head crab as a tabletop model, but I can also put it on my head as a mask for Halloween. So double usage, I guess. If this is gonna be on my head, then it needs to be big like like really big i have a i have a big head so let's blow this up to crazy proportions and then slice it into different parts and print each part the first hurdle was putting these all together consideration on how to put the parts together is kind of important in your design process so i wanted this to be lightweight which means it's basically just walls and each is only a few millimeters thick tops so gluing them is sort of problematic while you could print a lot of these parts as solid with a very low infill, it would mean a lot more filament, a lot more time, and a lot more weight when you're actually wearing it. But it is easier to assemble that way. If you were doing that, you could also use a peg and hole kind of system that is available in some slicers like Purchase Slicer. For thin parts like this, I would recommend using super glue along the edges just as a temporary solution, and then using these clamps to hold everything in position. Once that is complete, it is temporarily secure. The glue is not enough to hold it rigidly and I wouldn't leave it like that. What I do is I use something like a gap filler on the inside of the model because it is actually very, very strong. After that, it can be applied to the exterior and you can wipe it down with a paper towel so that it blends in a little more seamlessly. I prefer this approach than using something like a epoxy or a different kind of resin coating because the gap filler actually dries very, very quickly as opposed to most epoxy, which kind of takes a while to do. If you have a lot of layer lines on your print, you can use something like this. This is XTC 3D from Smoothon. We have this in our shop. It's a great two-part epoxy. Um, it's really good at hiding layer lines and other small perfections, but as an alternative, you could also use normal 3D printer resin and something like this, a UV lamp. Now for the painting. So first of all, go for a primer. This is really, really useful if you've used a resin or a similar coating and the surface is really smooth, this will help your paint stick much better to the actual printed model. After that, a base coat of beige and some red and black and brown where those colors will be. Now, a lot of people like to use brushes for their models and for a lot of models, that's totally appropriate. However, for the head crab, it's rather vague and diffuse. It doesn't have that many details. It doesn't have a nose, it doesn't have eyes. It just has these kind of grabby, sucky things on the front. So we don't need to go into that much detail. Because this, I'm not using a brush design for 
detail painting. Instead, I'm just going to use a normal paintbrush and finger paint as well. You're a maker. Be proud of your disgusting hands. Or, you know, use gloves like a normal person. My choice of paint for this is oil paints. Well, why use oil paint? Because they're not cheap. They're do they take ages to dry? You have to go into a proper art shop and people look at you because you're not buying oil paint for the intended purpose and they make weird faces at you. Well, I, I use oil paints. So like as a, as a hobby, I paint with oils. I am that guy silently judging you in the art shop. But oil paints can blend in a way that's not really possible with other paints because it is so thick. You can't really get this effect with acrylic or other paints. So for this purpose, it's actually really useful. But if you wanted to thin it down, you can with alcohol like IPA or turpentine or turpentine replacement like white spirit. This is also great for doing an aged bone texture and we used this technique on a video a couple of weeks ago. You can view it here, it turned out really nicely. Painting doesn't really take a long time here. You just need to build up a base coat and then dry brush along the textures that were created in sculptures and that really helps give it some more depth. Okay, what is just as important as the mask is the rest of the costume. I got a lab coat online and some fake butt, and I'm just gonna go to town. So how do I apply this like it looks like a splatter? I don't know if I'm just gonna like splash it on or not. Oh, it's thick. Ugh. Uh, it looks like icing on a cake. Okay, so I'm just dabbing actually. When in doubt, just, just dab like crazy. Ugh. It's water washable, I hope. Okay, I think that will that'll do. So how did it turn out? Presenting the head crab. So my wife saw me doing this, like painting it, and she has now forbidden me from wearing it when I'm taking my daughter trick-or-treating. But what she doesn't know... It's very, very claustrophobic with this on. I, I didn't, I didn't, did not foresee this. It's, it's quite uncomfortable because of that. <laughs> if you don't like confined spaces, maybe think of some, doing something else. I had a lot of fun making this and actually back in 2018 when I first designed this uh, there wasn't a huge amount of high-speed printers that you could get. You would be lucky to get a 150 millimeter per second Core XY printer but now with the most recent advances in printing speed this was printed in eight pieces uh, on two nights and that would have taken me like a week in 2018 so I'm kind of glad that I waited. Please don't consider this just a Halloween video. You don't need an excuse to make a costume at any time of the year. And if you're into costume making, then check out our interview with Cami Cosplay that we did a couple of weeks ago. Link is right here. As always, guys, thanks so much for watching. And if you haven't subscribed already, then click that button. If you have any questions, just write us a comment below or send us an email. And we'll see you guys next time. Later. Did you uh, see the new guy? I don't know. He's got like three doctorates or something. Worked at a research facility. I don't know, or a shower curtain manufacturer. Do you think there's something off with him? I can't quite put my finger on it. He's Irish. <laughs> That's it.